tremendous. Welcome to Anderson's, Alan. Thank you, thank you. It, uh, everybody, Pleasure to be here. Meet Alan from Fender. You've probably seen him on Fender's YouTube channel. He is, as we say in the world of YouTube, an influencer. Uh-oh. <laughs> a bad influencer. I got a face for radio, though, so... <laughs> Um, Maybe Alan, I should stick to radio. Tell uh, the good people of YouTube Land uh, what your uh, what you do at Fender. I am the senior product development manager for electric guitars and basses. So everything that's wow. not custom shop, me and my team kind of put together, develop, help usher it through the factory, and all that. Good that's stuff. quite a responsible position, that one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a scary amount of responsibility. And how long have you worked at Fender for? Actually, next year will be my twentieth year. So coming up on twenty years at Fender. That's crazy. I know. I'm how almost dead start? now. So how did, how did you start? Where did you Where did you get in? <laughs> I actually started in customer service, mm -hmm. and then I moved around to many different jobs at Fender, sales, sales administration, planning, even, and then just kind of stuck around long enough that they had to put me <laughs> they in. Had to promote different you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had so much dirt on the management, <laughs> yeah, that's island, right. did you? That's right. Like <laughs> I had some files <laughs> hidden away, and. Um, so tell us about then, you know, when it comes to guitar design, are you a total Fender nerd? Like, could you tell me everything about any Fender guitar ever? It, well, no, I, I love Fenders and I would consider myself a Fender nerd. After working for Fender for so long, of course, you know, I fall in love with the Leo designs because as you yeah. said earlier today, they're just pretty much perfect. Yeah. There are plenty of people out there though who know more than me about when the screw moved from here to here and what year and you know when they went from form var wire to enamel wire and all that kind of stuff so i know a good amount of that stuff but gosh there's tons of people that probably know way more than i do well about that. it's uh i must admit i must i'm 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 well into to you know my am i into my 30th year of selling guitars not quite but i'm coming up to that and still now you know little nuggets of that new information of like you know form var and all this like absolutely what? yeah so yeah. anyway we are going to go on a, a journey of uh discovery today uh with alan about some new guitars that uh have just been launched and and you're on a bit of a roll at fender at the moment aren't you, you got the midas touch i think it's almost like player series boom yeah, yeah, we had the American Professional, American Professional Series, boom, the American yeah. Original Series. The pedals. Yeah. It's like everything, yeah. everything you touch is turning to gold. There's some so, good stuff going on. The Acoustasonic Tele. Yes. Anyway, so the latest series to get a bit of uh, magic dust mm -hmm. from Fender is uh, the Classic Series is outgoing now. Right. Been a great range of guitars. Mm -hmm. um, really, really loved the Player Series. I love the Road Worn stuff. All right. Um, but anything currently that's sort of Mexican made uh, and looks a bit old school is going. Yes. And it's being replaced by... Vintera series. Vintera. Yeah, and this is a Vintera. kind of a mashup word of vintage era. It's not. It's, it, as we all know, it's it from was the... one of the Thundercats. <laughs> yes. The lesser known Thunder... He was only in episode, <laughs> oh, episode four, I think he was in, and you yeah. know, he was... Lionel. Was Snarf's mother. It's Lionel's, or Lionel's cousin. girlfriend. Yeah. Something like Drop, that. Right. So Vintera, <laughs> vintage era, I guess, is where it's kind of That's right. come from. That's right. So tell us, kind of, obviously we're going to look at a few guitars, but yep. it's quite a big range, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. So give us the sort of, you know, what's the overview of Vintera? Right. So it is the, the vintage style instruments that we're making in the Ensenada factory. Um, it's carrying over from Classic Series. So what we've done is a few things. Number one are the pickups. To me, I think half or 50% of a guitar's tone comes from pickups, in mm -hmm. my opinion. And so we always kind of look at pickups when we're refreshing our instruments. So we went through every model and refreshed the pickups with our friend Tim Shaw, who's a genius at pickup yes. design. And we said, well, let's make the, each different era's pickups a little more specific to the era. So we did delve into the, oh, the 50s telly has Alnico 2 and Alnico 3, you know, and mm -hmm. then it switched to Alnico 5 in the 60s. Um, and, and the form var versus enamel wire, all that good stuff is in there. So 50s, 60s, and 70s, 70s era pickups are all a little bit more era correct now. And just to remind me again then, so when, on the old outgoing range, did 50s, 60s and 70s have essentially the same pickup set in them? Very close, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so Pretty so much butter spread of Alnico 5 and, and right. I think it was poly saw wire on a lot of them. Um, but now to get a more vintage sound, be, believe it or not, you know, you use a different Alnico magnet, a different type of wire form var I think is thinner than enamel, the coating. It has an effect on the sound, yeah. okay? So number one is we went through every pickup set of every model and kind of voiced them to yeah. be a little bit more era specific, which is great. And you can really tell the difference yeah. when so, you're playing. So in, in layman's terms, and we'll have a little listener, because you, you've got a 50 Strat and I've got a 50 Yeah, now this is the here. modified version. Oh, that okay. I have. So that's kind of taking over from like classic player. Exactly, right? yes. 
Yes. Well, let me give you this one then. Okay. Because um, we might as well start, not quite, you know, where it all began, back in the 50s, guys, when uh, it was totally legal to do all kinds of bad <laughs> things. Um, uh, but they did make some good guitars. Oh, yeah. So, in layman's terms, what kind of characteristic are you giving the kind of the 50s class, uh, Ventera? So, you know, like the, the, the non-modified ones, what kind of a vibe are you giving those? Are they like the, the brightest ones or the... Um, actually, yeah. I mean, I think um, Alnico 5 is, is like our magnet of choice, usually mm -hmm. for the traditional Fender magnets. I think of the 50s models, the Tele is really the only one that has Alnico 2 in the neck and 3 in the right. bridge. The other ones are all pretty much Alnico 5, and the wire is really what changes. But um, Alnico 5 is definitely the brightest and the strongest of the magnets, you right, know, and okay. that's what gives the, the Strat its kind of snap and sparkly, bell-like clean tones, you yeah. know. And then as you move into the 60s, they change to enamel wire, and, um, you know, that's a little bit of a different sound. I think it's... Um, not quite as bright as mm -hmm. the 50s. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, on the modified models, we kind of overwind them just a little bit okay. for a little bit more oomph. So, yeah, give us a, give us a nice big open call. We've got a very clean sounding amplifier. Mm -hmm. Have this you, is... got any, you got a little bit of dirt on there? Yeah, or? I think so. <laughs> So it's nice it's kind sound. of, yeah, and that's some, some crispy brightness. <laughs> So all the stuff, you know, the little snappy on the in-between positions. So the pickups were one of the number one things we went into and changed for all the models. Unbelievable. Yeah, and as you mentioned, this is in this series, there's quite a breadth of models, more mm. varied models than any any other series that we offer. Okay. Because we have all the 70s tellies, we have 50 strats, 60 strats, we've added a uh, Mustang bass and a Mustang yeah. guitar, um, and there's 70 strats, so there's just way more models in this series than all the I, other I'll, series. I'll put a link in the description below. There'll be a page on the Anderson's website that'll just give you a big overview of the whole new uh, Vintera yeah. range. Um, so the other thing I think that's probably synonymous with a, with a 50s uh, Fender, in addition to that perhaps slightly brighter, maybe cleaner kind of tone, is the fatter necks. Yeah. Right. So what have we, you know, and, and again, maybe more so to do with the strap than the, the telly, but that idea of a slightly softer V kind mm -hmm. of vibe. So right. are we getting that on the, on the fifties? Absolutely. Um, one of the things we maintained was the, the vintage style neck mm -hmm. shapes. So on the 50 strat, it's a soft V on the telly fifties telly. It's a big just, U. Just a big, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we wanted to offer something new and give people a taste of different eras. So I kind of looked through some custom shop dimensions and mm -hmm. kind of changed the dimension on, on the first and 12th fret of almost every model. Mm -hmm. So they tended to get a bit thicker. Right. And you'll notice that this one in particular has a nice, big, thick U. Yeah. This has a thicker, soft V. Okay, so all the vintage models pretty much got a little bit thicker. All the dimensions vary between the first fret and the 12, depending on the model. Yeah. Um, but we definitely affected the necks. And then um, the other thing we did was the tint um, got a little bit orangey. And we wanted to back off the, the tint a little bit. So yeah. we, we feel like we made it a little bit more... Uh, classy and antique looking. Um, so that was another thing we did and also have chosen a much wider variety of vintage colors. There's over, yes. there's 21 different vintage colors now across all the different models. So yeah. a lot of fun stuff, for, you know, from the Lake Placid Blue to the Fiesta Red. Some new colors we're offering now that we haven't in a while is Seafoam Green. Yeah. Um, we're doing Ice Blue Metallic in this series. We, we've developed a mocha for the 70s models that, that really nails the 70s vibe. So a lot of fun colors in there. Now, how come after 20 plus years, maybe more, of everybody going, you know what, the seven and a quarter inch radius is like, you know, unless you've got the guitar really beautifully set up, it can be a bit of a dog round here sometimes. So let's go with the sort of nine and a half inch, because even though it's not period correct, you know, it's right. It's but then John Mayer comes out and goes, ah, seven and a quarter is fine, you know, like that. And so now it's the rush back to, okay, he says it's fine. So right, yeah, right. let's go seven and a quarter again. Yeah, yeah. So what's the... 
So is it fine or isn't it fine, Mr. Fender? Well, you know? it depends. You know, you can set up a guitar on seven and a quarter, so you can still bend notes. You yeah. know, it does take some finesse on some guitars. They vary so much when you attach a neck to a body and the angle of where it goes over the bridge and all that. It varies so much that you really do sometimes need to dial it in on a seven and a quarter. Right. Um, but we have in this series, there's about six models of the 21 that are quote unquote modified models yeah. that have nine and a half inch radius and satin back on the neck, such yeah. as this one. Uh, when, actually, when, actually not this one, but when in the when modified, in the, the sort of the Fender history did it change from a, a seven and a quarter to it, just in case everyone's got and I know most of you will know what we're talking about, but radius we're talking about there's like a curvature on uh, a guitar's fretboard um, and Fender, certainly older Fenders would have been known for having quite a, a, a pronounced right. curve on, on the fretboard. Gibson would have had a flatter kind of curb and then, right. you know, modern Ibanez's or something are, are almost completely flat, not quite, but almost. Right. And then you've got things like compound radius where it goes from more curved to less curved as you go up. But there was this idea that on vintage Fender guitars, if, if you did that, you'd expect the note to kind of choke out right. because, and you can cut, it's not doing it, but you can kind of hear that toppy. Yeah, now if you it's bend a note and a half, you might start feeling there. some choke, right? So now it's gone. Yeah. I should, I should turn my, yeah. you probably can't hear it, but here. So the seven and a quarter has quite a higher center point there. Yeah. So you can usually get away with like a whole note bend, but once you go a whole note plus a half, you might run into some choking on the So seven that's and a where the nine and a half Right, uh, which is a slightly flat race, which was introduced roughly when in the sort I, of the world of Fender. It was after the, it was probably in the early '80s, you know, right. probably with the American standards when okay. when um, the Bill Schultz era sort of. Yeah, stuff. well, before that, probably it right. was probably Dan Smith, okay. who um, did the American standard first, and that's probably where the nine and a half came in. Because I know right up through the '70s, even into the early '80s, you know, it was seven and a quarter. Okay, you know, so so if you're gonna go, you know, of course these this Ventura range, apart from the modern ones are obviously designed to appeal to someone that wants that very right. vintage kind of feel right so just be aware that um, that's kind of normal yeah uh, to, to get you know for real heavy bending up here that you will get that element of choking but the flip side of it I've always found the uh, I've always found that just for general normal playing you know chords and normal you know bends of a semitone or a tone I actually like the this, you know, I, I find as soon as you go for a much flatter fretboard, not not nine and a half. I'm talking when you're into like twelve or fourteen right. inch radius. The the finger, the strings slip under your finger then mm. because you haven't got the string height on on you know things like the D and the G to sort of to not slip under your fingers. So I I'm sort of I think I'm kind of I, and a lot of the fuss as well. I, if you gave me ten guitars and blindfolded me and just said tell me which one's the nine and a half right. and which ones, the, I think I'd have to be almost finding the fault. Before I could go, oh yeah, down here, I, I just couldn't tell you. I don't right, think, right. From, a, from a, a feel point of view. I think the frets have a lot to do with that too. If they're taller frets or vintage style frets, these again, like you said, are meant to to really give people the feel mm. and the tone of vintage instruments. So they're all seven and a quarter radius and vintage frets. Right. Our modified models actually have nine and a half inch radius and medium jumbo frets yeah. for a different, more so, modern. So feel. vintage fret meaning a thinner, skinnier it's fret. It's skinnier yeah. and not as tall. Yeah. Right. So if you have a taller fret. Um, you can get a better grip on the string, I feel like, and right. they kind of don't pop out as easily. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's all personal preference when it boils down to it. I think um, some people do prefer a seven and a quarter, yeah. actually, even though there might be some limitations when you're bending, you know, on a seven and a quarter. Um, but it's interesting because I've had guys at the factory set up seven and a quarter radius guitars, and you could bend all over the place without yeah. a choke. So some of it's the finesse of the setup. I, th I think, and that was the and how you know, how high you like your action. That, that was like. the you know that was the the comment I think John Mayer made a lot in the in the you know in his videos, which was that it is just. It's just the setup, you know, a good, yeah. a good, a, a well-made guitar set up properly with a seven and a quarter inch radius will perform fine. Um, so I'll just give you a run through of, of the, the sort of the 50s telly sound here. Um, is there a, a, a modern, like yes. a 50s modern? Yes. Now so this is, is, this is what was known as the, the Baja. Baja. Right. Now it's the 50s telly modified. And we don't have that today, right? We don't. We don't. have the, okay. the 60s version of it. Fine. Well, we'll come to that. So this is the standard uh, neck pickup. <laughs> Quite low output, isn't it? It's a real kind of warm. Yeah, that Alnico two in the neck. Yeah, I mean, 
pronounced over what to, you know we were getting at some a of the other guitars. Warmer, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the two together. Uh, and the bridge pickup. So El Nico 2. So you really have got that kind of lovely buttery kind of rhythmy, nice yeah. clean. And then straight. That real snappy. Yeah. I like 20, that. Yeah. I like that. What else have we got on the 50 stuff? I mean, again, things that haven't changened. I guess, you know, you've, the, the single ply scratch plate is period correct. Right. The, the, the big brass um, yeah, now, saddles. This on is the... something we changed. Um, the Classic Series 1, I think, had the steel saddles. But, oh, did it? Yeah, okay, put, cool. put the brass back on there. That's a little bit more yeah. vintage correct. The dome knobs, um, you know, the, the tint, seven and a quarter. That's yeah. a nice fat U. Um, so that's a very 50s style telly. Did you, did you have all the staggered pole pieces on the old classic range or is that new on? No, on the, the staggered Vintero? something. Well, here's another interesting part about it. The stagger, okay, and the yeah. 50s were staggered um, and the 60s maintained the stagger, but the 50s uh, pole pieces you can see are beveled on the top. Yeah. And then the 60s pole pieces are more flat. So there's all these little subtle details that we've kind of imitated there. Was that what was the purpose behind beveling the, the pole piece as opposed to well, you know, leaving it flat? I've actually read and heard some stories of old Fender folk that that said you know Leo is very utilitarian about using parts and never wanting to waste things. And it, one of the stories I've heard is that some of the magnets in the old days had gotten cracked around the top right and so instead of just throwing them out they beveled it around there to get rid of the cracks that's one story some sometimes <laughs> it's tough to tell exactly why something was done you know but they stopped beveling them they, they might just look a little nicer too you yeah. know i don't know how much effect it has on the tone but later when they turned back into flat uh tops that could have been a cost savings as well I love the folklore of it all. Exactly. You know, like it's There's, just nobody really knows, do they? But it's sometimes just, it's tough to tell exactly yeah. why something was done. But a, a lot of the time, Leo did stuff for utilitarian reasons. Yeah, for sure. To save money or to cut costs or to not waste material. Yeah. Okay, so that's the that's the fifties telly and the the fifties strap. That's right. Um, should we look at? Do you want to go to sixties now, or do you want to look at the sort of the modified variant of the fifties? Yeah. First? So this one is the modified. 50 strat that you've got there. We actually only have one 60s here. Okay. All these maple no boards. No worries. And that 70s one's a maple board too. Big difference in the, even just picking it up, there's a difference in the feel of the neck. Yeah, that neck is um, much fatter yeah. than this one. That's yeah. the more vintage style. This is the 50 strat modified, which is carried over from the classic player 50 yeah. strat. Yeah. So what we did in all the modified models is we you know, change the specs to be a little bit more player centric. So yeah. this is actually a modern C neck shape with a yeah. satin back. So yeah. it's a nice slim, the, the modern C, which is borrowed from the American standard, yeah. um, is kind of like a default favorite of many, many players. Yeah. And this has medium jumbo frets. So when you're playing. That choke out thing you were yeah. talking about is easy to avoid. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the main differences, the modified. And then there's some other little things too. The pickups on all the modified models are wound a little more, but mm -hmm. they're still the vintage era, you know, Alnico with, with the right wire and everything. Um, this one actually has locking vintage tuners on them, yeah. which is kind of a cool thing. You can lock them from the top here. Um, and then all the modified models have some cool switching on a lot of them. Um, this button here on the strats adds the neck pickup in to position one and two. So you yeah. got the two extra tones of the neck and yeah. the bridge and then all three on, which is kind of nice. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that's basically um, the mod, the, and the, the, the Ventura the, 50 strap the, modified. The, 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 um, the two point trim two point too, trim, right. Yeah. Now that is designed to, you know, reduce friction when you're playing. So it stays in tune a little better. And I think it also, Having two points, it definitely reduces the friction, but it makes it a little smoother yeah. as well when you're using the trim. So these are all modifications to the 50 Strat that we did uh, for the modified model to make it just a little bit yeah. more player centric and more. So that that's just called a 50s modified. Right? Yeah, it's not Ventura so. 50 Strat modified. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, we don't have to worry about this idea of classic player versus classic yeah. versus uh, classic lacquer or whatever. Right. We, we kind of wanted to simplify yeah. the line too. So now you just have Ventura. Yeah. 
regular models and Ventura modified models, yeah. okay? And the Roadworns now are actually um, kind of removed from the line and they will continue on as limited runs. Yeah. No, to I, make them a little more special. Yeah, that's cool. And again, we are um, expecting, I think at some point in September or October, we've got we've got more of the- Purples? Roadworn purples, yeah. Those are super fun cool. instruments. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. Um, is everything an older body on these or is there a mix across the range? Um, there's definitely a mix. For instance, that 50 Strat that we were holding before is white blonde and on the 50 Strat, there's two alder colors and the white blonde is actually ash. So there are, all some, there are some models that feature ash. The 70 Strat is all ash. The 70s thin line is ash. So there's ash and alder mixed in there. Um, and nice. that's traditional, you know, Fender yep. stuff. That a lot of the see-through finishes were ash for a long time. Let's get some tones on on this uh, '50s modern modified modified modified. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Between position. Yeah. So although these are hotter pickups, it's still got the yeah. quacky, snappy. Really fun instruments to play. You know, the pickups again, Tim Shaw did such a great job going through and kind of revoicing them. Yeah. And they're very responsive and dynamic. Can and I hear the difference between the, the sort of just the, the three, when you hit the three? Sure, sure, yeah. So um, in the middle position, it's the neck and yeah. the bridge and middle. And then we'll have all three. I hear that little bit of the darker, woodiness from it? the yeah. neck pickup. Yeah, and then if you do the, the thing where you just again add the, so it's these two pickups. Right. right? Yeah. And that's where they did. I never remember, who was the, who's the guy is it David Gilmore or someone? Who's the guy that's famous for kind of having that sort of, you know, the, the bridge and the neck pick up? That's his sort of tone. I think it was Richie Blackmore. Richie Blackmore, good shout. Smoke no on the water would up. never have sounded quite right. Uh, and with anything <laughs> right. other than the, uh, right. so this, is, this now is the smoke on the water strap, basically. That's what you want to do. That's cool, man. Cool. Yeah. So let's jump now from the 50s to the next decade. Um, although we only have one. We have one, yes. So apologies everybody here. The uh, iconic 60s Strat, we shall have to do in another video um, as it's not here yet. But of course we do have the 60s Telecaster. Yeah, this beautiful is Lake Placid Blue. That's right, and this is the modified one. So for everyone watching, so we don't have the standard 60s Strat or Telecaster. Okay, um, we will, Pete and I will redo those in another video. Just in case you're wondering, we're actually shooting this video probably about a month before you're watching it, and this is just what's these are the these are the samples, if you like, at the moment, right. aren't they? So um, expect lots more videos coming soon of, of the of filling up the gaps of what we've not got. So okay, so straight onto the '60s modified. Yeah. What's the what are the main differences between that and a and a '50s telly and maybe the non-modified version? Right. So um, the '60s telly now has a Bigsby. Okay, so we have a model with the Bigsby. That's oh, as another well. Yeah. Not instead. Mm -hmm. So you right. can have the hard tail. So the, the 60s telly that we had turned into a 60s telly with the Bigsby. So there's no standard There's no regular 60s, 60s telly. It's a 60s oh, with the Bigsby now. I yeah. see. And then this is the modified version. Now, this actually has um, kind of a thicker C neck. And again, satin back, nine and a half inch radius, medium jumbo frets. Yeah. And then um, hotter 60s Tim Shaw design pickups. Yeah. And then it shares a lot of the... Um, 50s modified features, which were the Baja tellies. Um, it's got a phase switch, so you can go in and out of phase when both pickups are on, and it's a four-way, so you can have yeah. parallel series. Yeah. Um, 
and then everything else is kind of vintage as far as the the look of it with brass saddles on the bridge yeah um, vintage tuners and all that. So really, again, it's a satiny, smooth neck, and then... Really great pickups. So the, the modified ones are, you know, just a tad bit hotter, not yeah. super, super duper hot, but a tad bit hotter for a little bit more edginess. Um, I, I've just noticed, and the bridge is the same on my one here. Mm -hmm. What's the deal with like, where it's like half chrome, half kind of brushed steel? This is part of the, this is the way it was always done. Um, now this is an interesting, another example of Leo just being completely utilitarian about things. You got to remember that in, in the early days, all these tellies came with the cover and yeah, people yeah. used to keep the cover on, right? So yeah. when you have that bridge cover on, you really only can see this top part <laughs> of the bridge, right? So we only polished the part that you could s kind of see under the cover. And then the rest of it, he left unpolished because he figured that the cover's always going to be on. He kind of felt like this bridge looked like the engine of a car, and it was only to be hidden under that cover. So he only polished this edge of it because that's what would show when the cover was on. And I, I'm, I'm sitting here going, have they always been like this for like the last, or is this? You don't notice, and then you start looking at them and you notice that all the vintage style ones are like that. So that hasn't changed between the, so on a, like a, I guess on the American standard stuff, it's uh, some of the It's a different stuff, plate It's a different too. plate. Yeah, yeah. so the whole okay. thing. Yeah, but the vintage ones are like that and you don't even notice until you start looking at it. Yeah, you even notice that? I've never noticed. Have we got a close up on one of these? Are we going to Chris? You see what I'm, this idea that the, the sort of above the, uh, pick up here it's chrome and then below the pickup it is not just quite the right, sort of you know this yeah. rougher so it's an extra step to polish that yeah save time I, and money if you just polish totally, a little bit that Leo, you can see Leo Fender would have been he would have been worth a fortune wouldn't he these days? yes like he could go into any company <laughs> couldn't he and just go I can see 57 <laughs> yeah, different exactly. things I can change immediately to I'll make use up all productive. your excess parts yeah. and inventory we'll, we'll snap this thing right in shape yeah he was he was amazing it is just it honestly is amazing and yeah. it's like I kind of I read I tried to write tried to read a bit of stuff about Leo last year. I just sort of got into it. And it's a shame because he, he never really, re he, I think he himself was obviously quite modest and sort of um, insular. Yeah. So there's, there's almost nothing about him other than what other people have written about him. That's right. And most of that stuff, other people are trying to remember back like 50 years rather than, nothing was really written down at right. the time. You right. know? So there's a lot of, myth and folklore yeah. around the guy yeah because um, you know, you're right the stuff that i've learned over the past 20 years a lot of it has been reading and talking to people that used to work for fender in the old days yeah. and such and um you know i don't know a lot of people that actually knew leo you know maybe one or two yeah. um that i've spoken to but you're right so there's probably some other reasons for that too that that are just lost in the history i love it I, I love the fact that if you read any sort of you know gear nerd forum they'll they'll be talking about sort of all the sonic advantages of the way it's an absolutely leo just got nice no, because it was cheaper it's like or it's easier it's yeah like, it's like, big, exactly <laughs> exactly yeah like in the, even gibson and, and fender in the old days you know they would order alnico magnets from the supplier and sometimes the supplier would just send alnico two or three and they would just use whatever got sent because it wasn't, they weren't as, you know, screw counting as we are nowadays about what's the tone of Alnico 3 versus 2. Or, so that's interesting too. Yeah, that You would just sure. get magnets of either ilk and just use them in the pickups that yeah. day. Anyway, right. Well, okay, so that sounds great. Do you want to just, um, and actually you've... Uh, want you me need, to show some more of the... Yeah, do, do some more of the tones. Okay. So particularly because I think this, um, the, uh, people will be familiar with this switching from yes. the Baja. Yeah. But I, I'm, I think one of the things that I think cool on the bar heart is there were one of the switching ways sort of piled the two single cars together to make more of a humbucking kind of vibe didn't they as opposed to just like so it had a lot of interesting yes that's the series it. yeah right the series so the switch goes bridge <laughs> Then into the position with both pickups yeah. on. A nice kind of warm in between yeah. sound. There. And then to the neck. And warmer still. 
And then the series mode is when they're both on together right. and in humbucking kind yeah. of mode, so they're in series. Yeah. So, so you do have a lot of kind of a wide range of tones here and then of course when they're both on either in position two or four you can go out of phase and it gets a little bit more nasally and honky yeah. you can do some get some kind of funky out of phase tones um so that's kind of cool the, the different switching that you can get on the on the modified tellies and if that was the 50s modified one same exact functionality with the switching and you just have pretty much that guitar but with a maple neck and, and, yes and, neck. A, and a kind of a thick soft v yeah. on that model so those are modified not so era specific um yeah. those are actually yeah. this model as the baja was designed by chris fleming master builder so he chose the shapes for both yeah. of these that's superb okay look so finish the 60s uh, into the 70s. Right. Um, again, where, you know, I don't think it's necessarily uh, referred back to as perhaps a real high point in Fenders yeah. from a quality point of view. But yes. I think it was quite an interesting time from an experimental point of view, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So you've got I some... mean, uh, honestly, um, the 70s designs, there's some wonderful, wonderful amps and guitars from that era, right. you know. Um, there, it's not as bad as everyone makes out, I think. There, there was a tendency towards some heavier bodies, a lot yeah. of ash was used, um, and some of it maybe hadn't been executed properly. But for instance, the three bolt neck, that's a fine attachment if it's engineered properly to the tolerances that it should yeah. be. You know, People just have this kind of thing about, oh, the 70s, were the... but there's tons of great 70s stuff out no, there. No, I, I think that again, it's got a real 70s feel. Some of the things like Tele Deluxe and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, they, they just have a, I don't know what the essence of that era was stylistically, yeah. you know, it's very, it feels very correct. But I, you know, I, I don't know, I sort of, I do agree with you. It's not, it's not the designs that were the problem. I think it's just that era for Fender, it had just, they were struggling, I think, to balance the amount of guitars they needed to make for the demand, the pressures of the profit, sort of pressures from CBS and all that, you know, so it's just, right. I just, I, and I certainly remember, you know, when I, when I first started selling Fender guitars, people would just come in with their, you know, 78 strap and it'd just be like, can you, can I just give this to you in like, just give me anything off the new like eighties strap, you yeah. know, type thing. Uh, and yet now, of course, if someone came in with a 78 strap that was reasonably tidy, it's like, it's like worth twice as much yeah, as what a new. It's, it's interesting like, how it kind of cycles does, through. Yeah, 70 that? stuff is in vogue now and yeah. it's super cool. And there's plenty of 70 straps that sound great and play great. And on the flip side, you know, I've held a lot of 50s and 60s vintage Fender instruments that had some spotty playability as well. You know, uh, it just depends on the piece, the instrument that you get. So we've obviously, uh, actually, we have skipped out, of course, from the 60s, all the Jaguars, Jazz Masters, and Mustangs. Right. We still have all those in the line, the Jags, yep. the Jazzes, and adding the Mustangs in. So we'll have to, again, we'll revisit that in a, in a future video. But let's, okay, so we're jumping into the 70s now. Uh, and again, we don't have a Strat, do we, from memory? No, we don't. We still have a 70 Strat in the line with the big headstock. That's one of my favorites, you know. I always think of Jimi Hendrix, um, and I love the big headstock. Actually, it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's again, it's iconic, isn't it? It's very, very cool. yeah. The, bu the bullet truss rod. Yeah, uh, it's, I love it's that. It's very cool. Yeah. This has always been one of the coolest models to me, you know, Seth Lover design pickups and everything. Yeah. Now, of course, the wide range, the real wide range, if we were making them exactly like they were made back in the day, would have Kunafe, which is a different magnet. Okay. And, and that's the magnet that's. You just can't get that anymore. And just, I, get, I know this sounds dumb and I should have asked all these questions when I was 18 and not left it. In, um, but is this literally effectively two single coils but offset? Yes. Or, yeah. Right. So you're it's getting, a humbucker you're getting that. that kind of hum cancelling vibe mm -hmm. but without having two full 
coil side That's by right. side. I mean, and, and the p part of these old wide ranges where they were actually magnets that were threaded so you could raise and lower, that the pole pieces themselves were actually the magnets yeah. versus slugs, you know. Now, we can't get the Cunefe material anymore, which is copper, nickel, and iron, mm -hmm. okay? So these are really not 100% reproductions of what an actual wide range would be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a humbucker under there that we've just voiced a little differently than the last range with the wide range yeah. covers. But they sound fantastic. Again, Tim Shaw helped mm -hmm. us voice them. So they're That's great. Yeah, they, they're just a... using that. The, you, you're just using the one drive pedal on the board there. Yeah. Me. Uh huh. Really a nice bold kind of you, nice string to string mm. note clarity. Very fun guitar to play. This is always one of my favorites, you know, um, because it was such an interesting model for yeah. Fender to, entering into the, the humbucker world. Seth yeah. Lover obviously designing the, the wide range. And um, so we just kind of revoiced them so they just sound better. Tim, again, Tim Shaw, I can't say enough about him. He's just a great pickup designer. So yeah. these are just designed to sound nice. <laughs> That's the, the neck. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So sorry, I'm probably playing the exact same two licks over and over and over. No, I it's really good. only know they about are very licks. good licks. They're good <laughs> licks. They're worthy of being played over and over. So but, what is this? Like Ash Body? You've got this interest. Actually, this is uh, Alder, Ash. actually. Really? Yeah. The, the, we really... didn't do Ash on the on the uh, on the Tele Deluxe. So some of the cool features of the Tele Deluxe are that um, it's nine and a half inch radius with medium jumbo frets. It's got kind of a slimmer C neck. Um, it's got the belly cut here, which is era specific yeah. here the three bolt neck um with an early micro tilt there obviously we we kept that for our modern strats and tellies the micro tilt allows yeah. you to adjust the tilt without having to remove the neck entirely and the big headstock with the bullet yeah. truss rod and then the 70s different tuners there yes yeah i like the um i like this sort of through body so it's like a, it's like a hybrid kind of hardtail strat that's right um bridge but that's strung right. through the body which yeah. is awesome mm -hmm. it sounds fat that good. yeah and this i'm is really surprised that's older it's got that kind of more ash looking yeah. wide grain on it hasn't it yeah but, uh, alder actually can get a, a wide variety of grain patterns yeah. and some of it darn near looks like ash i mean yeah. all three of these models all three of the colors are alder and this is vintage blonde another kind of a newer color that we're adding into the series um i saw a lot of vintage 70s mm. tele deluxes in kind of the yellowy blonde and we never did that before and that was always one of the coolest ones yeah. to me so that's why so, we so other guitars in this 70s range then is there a thin line as yep. well so mm -hmm. thin that line one telly. is ash a semi-hollow ash body. okay so so you got the tele deluxe thin line telly and a 70s strap yes and it's 70s tele custom Telly. That has the wide range in the neck and a single coil with a regular telly right. bridge. That's kind of the key. Did Richard I see a Bigsby telly? One then as there's well? a '60s telly that has a Bigsby. Right. Sorry, and we mentioned that before. So there is. So the so the the, the missing one as such is there's no '60s telly regular. without a Bigsby. Right. Got it. Have you got it? Keep up. Um, well, I mean that's about the lot isn't it for for, for, for what we have here today yeah. we didn't have the um, jazz master there's a modified one and a regular one and then a modified jag with two humbuckers and a regular jag um and then the mustangs yeah i mean it, it's a and then the bases all the bases of course yes 50s well, P, we which do is super in cool our, 60s and base. 70s jazz bases yeah i mean i think it's again you really are kind of you know taking it sort of range by range in a, in a nice methodical way <laughs> And just trying to, um, yeah. If they, I don't, I don't think I ever really criticised the old classic range. I, I used to really like it, especially classic player was a great range. Yeah. But it, it did feel a little bit like we were just going to lump this sort of vintage vibe into sort of one thing, and then just kind of not really change the fifties and the sixties and the seventies right. that much. Right. More sort of superficial changes. Yeah. Whereas the new Ventura range. You definitely, you know, someone's gone. No, hang on a second. Look, we can make this like a bit more fifties, and we can make that a bit yeah. more seventies. Yeah, know? and it's super cool, man. Yeah. So the neck shapes, the tint, yeah. all the, the range of colors, all the ear specific pickups. We just kind of wanted to make it a little bit simpler and easier to understand. You know, we had classic player, regular classic, lacquer models, roadworn models. Now it's just 
Vintera models that are either regular or modified. And then well, on the lacquer side of things, presumably, obviously, I've, I've seen the pricing on all this kind of stuff, and yeah. it's it's obviously replacing the sort of the, the standard classic stuff. So it's more poly, polyurethane yeah. sort of finishes. Are you likely to revisit the, the lacquer thing? Because you did lacquer out of Ensenado, didn't you? Yes, yes. Now, so you've got facilities there to do Yeah, the, the road worns uh, are lacquer. So they'll, we'll still do lacquer on the road worns, you know, the satin road worn style lacquer. And yeah. those, again, will just be released as, as limited editions, and there'll be some coming out. Um, next year, yeah. Um, so we'll carry on the lacquer on those. So, yeah. so we might see some limited, some limited runs, sure. Run stuff. Yeah. Of, of, oh, that's cool, man. But these yeah. are these are great. I'm 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 very impressed. Thank um, you. Yeah, they're fun. You know, it's a way for someone to get the the seven and a quarter kind of big neck, yeah. super cool vintage vibe um, in a lower price point. So it's a little more accessible for people. Yeah, I mean, I, I won't tell you prices in the video because they change all the time. But if you if you follow the links in the description below, you'll see the pricing. Roughly speaking, it's not that different to the outgoing classic uh, range. So you know, think you know above player series and below performer series is kind right. of where this is sort of sitting. So right. that's awesome, man. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's good me. to meet it was you a as pleasure. well in the flesh. Yeah, nice to meet uh, you. And I'm sure we shall see each other at a NAM show soon. Yeah. But, well, uh, I want to go into your store as often as I can, so you got to invite me back many, many times. Well, let's go and do that now. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, well, thanks, guys, for watching. Post your comments below, please, and like and subscribe if you can, and we shall see you in another video shortly. Bye. <laughs>